Thank you for checking out this little teaser of the history of the papacy and church. Here's a little taste of what's coming up soon on the History of the Papacy podcast. Now, if you like what you hear, I'd love it if you'd leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or your podcatcher of choice. If you want to support the podcast even more, consider becoming a Patreon on patreon.com forward slash history of the papacy. There are many levels and benefits for you and you help keep the history of the papacy going. You can learn more about all of this at historyofthepapacypodcast.com. With that, here's another piece of the mosaic of the Popes of Rome and Christian Church, and I will definitely be talking to you more soon. There really aren't candidates per se going into the conclave or even during the conclave. That's not to say that there weren't odds on favorites going into a conclave, but they're not formal candidates. Everyone's a candidate. During each voting session, top contenders will often change from change their vote from one person to the next, especially during contentious conclaves. One man can be looking like he's almost made the threshold to be elected pope, but then a bad vote can knock him back down or even out. There's a lot of small group psychology going on because theoretically, at least, there isn't supposed to be any contact to the outside world during a conclave. There doesn't that doesn't mean that there isn't or wasn't any outside influence, especially in the 19th century. Everyone had a political agenda, a religious, you name it, agenda going into the conclave of 1829. Who would win? Who would win is the question. Well, you don't have to wait long to find out.